back to overconfidence. Who typically experiences overconfidence? Each and every one of us. So uh, when do we experience overplacement, thinking incorrectly that we're better than others? We do that when um, we encounter a task that, at which we experience success or achievement and others' successes are less visible to us. So there are a lot of people who enjoy cooking and who experience success in the kitchen and who think, hmm, my friends like my cooking. I like my cooking. Maybe I should start a restaurant. There are a lot of people out there who can cook and a lot of restaurants that get started, making it hard for anyone to make money running a restaurant. So um, it's easy to overplace. So this it, note, this is the flip of the imposter syndrome we were talking about earlier, where it's a hard task and you can't, you, you don't have an appreciation of how others are struggling. There you will underplace yourself. You will erroneously think that you're worse than others. Overplacement is where you observe your own strengths and virtues and abilities, but others are less visible to you, right? So all the good moves you made as a driver are obvious to you. And so it's easy for you to think, well, I must be a better driver than average. I haven't been in an accident where I was injured yet. Um, that can lead people to overplace themselves. And we're all vulnerable to that. Um, Earlier, I mentioned the third variety of overconfidence, excessive certainty that you know the truth. We are all vulnerable to being too sure of ourselves. When you ask people, how sure are you about anything from you know, what they believe about politicians to their religious faith, to what they think about what leads to career success or how tall Mount Everest is, on any of these things, when you ask people, how sure are you, they, are, they report being more sure than the facts can justify.